Gaming with a controller sucks. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. As you guys heard, gaming with a controller, it does suck. A lot of people realize that mouse and keyboard is really where it's at when you want to get serious, especially about your first person shooter gaming. Now back in the day, I used to PC game with mouse and keyboard. I wasn't great at it, but I was okay. And then we switched over to our console gaming and I've gotten used to gaming with a controller. And one of the advantages of gaming with a controller is that you unlock a handicap mode, which gives you special treatment to make it so that you can actually compete somewhat with the mouse and keyboard players, and that is called Aim Assist. Now, those of you who don't know what Aim Assist is, basically it makes it so you just gotta kinda get close to roughly where you need to aim, and then the software will just kinda snap you right onto that person and lock your aim as long as you kinda keep the controller inputs roughly in the same space as where that enemy is. Now, everyone knows that a mouse is much more precise than analog stick on a controller and therefore you guys don't get aim assist you have to fine tune and hone your skills to get that laser accuracy with your mouse but what do you do when you're not that good and you can't get laser accuracy but you really like the mouse and keyboard well luckily there's software such as rewazd now i don't know how to say that properly because i only recently started trying to use it and i found a number of problems we're going to cover those problems right now but first, we need to talk about what Rewazd is. Now, the whole point of Rewazd was to allow people to play games that insisted on using a controller and remap mouse and keyboard inputs to mimic a controller. And that's really great for games that insisted that you had to play it with a controller on your PC. And the software, it works really, really good. But some individuals found out that you can actually use that software in competitive games or in first person shooter games. It's where you can mimic a controller using mouse and keyboard and you get to maintain and continue to use aim assist. Now, there's a whole debate about is this cheating? We're going to talk about that towards the end of this video. So if you're wondering, hold on, Anton, I don't like this. We'll talk about what that actually means to the community later on in this video. But Rewazd actually has some legitimate purposes, even outside of cheating and outside of that conversation. There are legitimate people out there who require software like that to actually allow them to play the game. I'm talking about individuals who have suffered some form of damage or trauma to where they don't have full use of both hands like you or I might have. And those individuals have relied on software like Rewaz to remap controllers, use multiple inputs to some way still enjoy and play those games. Now that is a minority and this is a really weak excuse for cheating software to exist, but it is a legit use case for people that do require that software. But the game developers don't quite see it that way and many of them have begun to block Rewazd. Now I became a victim of that by accident very recently when I bought a Lenovo Legion Go handheld gaming computer. In fact, I've done reviews on this channel of that very computer and I sent it back because I had a major problem and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I'll tell you what that problem is because it helps you understand what's going on here. I used that Lenovo Legion Go for remote play to my PlayStation 5. I also used it with a Switch emulator to play my Switch games and I used it for PC gaming. Long story short, to use it with my PlayStation 5, I needed to use Rewaz to mimic a DualSense controller with the controllers that are built into the Lenovo Legion Go. I had no choice. I had to make it think that it was a PlayStation controller or it wouldn't even let me use it. So I installed Rewaz, no problem. Worked great. But what I found was when I went to play Call of Duty, the game would start to boot and then it would crash and it would start to boot and it would crash. And I went through every single possible solution to fix Call of Duty crashing or Call of Duty fail to boot and I never got it working. It was so annoying that I thought that the software was broken or there was some sort of conflict and I just didn't want to deal with it. So I actually got rid of my Lenovo Legion Go. Since then, I found out that Rewaz is actually blocked by Call of Duty and if they see it even installed on the system, 
they will stop the game from loading because they say it's cheating. So what is the lone PC gamer to do when you just want to use your keyboard and your mouse but pretend that it's a controller? And this is the world's longest segue to this. This is the Amzenix AX200. This is a controller emulator for your PC. So normally you guys have seen us talking about console gaming, PlayStation 5 and that sort of thing. This is strictly for PC. So don't ask me questions. Does this work on the PlayStation 5? Does it work on an Xbox? No, it does not. It does one thing and one thing only. And we're going to explore exactly what that is. We're going to start by doing an unboxing. So the packaging has really nice green and white and black packaging. It's actually kind of shiny. It's high quality, like it's, it's got a gloss finish to it. It's very high quality packaging. It does have a little bit of Chinese. That's not Chinese, that's Japanese. A little bit of Japanese on the bottom. It's got some Japanese on the back with some details about what this is, but we will cover what it is and what it does after we do the unboxing. So let's open this guy up and see what's in here. Now, I'm not expecting a whole lot. I haven't looked at this at all. So we start with a little handy manual. It does have some information on there about how to plug this in. It talks about default key mappings. If you're using your keyboard and mouse right off the bat, these are the default key mappings right out of the box. It does also have an app and we will explore that app in a minute, but that's what that's got. And then that's it. It's got, if I take this guy out, this is the whole thing right here. Now there's a button on top here. Presumably this is to force programming mode. If you need to update it or whatever, normally you'll just hold the button down while you plug it in and it will force it into programming. But looking at the device itself, there's only so many options here. So obviously it's got a USB port at the top. This is to plug into your computer. It'll work on a laptop. It'll work on a desktop. It'll work on pretty much any computer as long as you have a USB port. You could use this with USB-A to USB-C adapter if your computer does not have a USB-A port, which is going to be a real thing very, very soon here. Moving around to the side, there's a port here that says EXT with a lightning bolt next to it. That's for external power. And what that is, if you have a keyboard and mouse that draws a lot of power, you can plug in an additional USB-C plug here to boost the power capabilities to keep this all powered up. You'll only notice that if you experience like sluggishness or dropouts, or if you notice like your RGB on the keyboard cutting in and out, probably you're uh, exceeding the power rating and you'll need that extra power supply. It does not come with an extra USB cable or anything, so you'd have to supply your own. It also has a little port right there with a picture of a keyboard and a mouse and moving over to the side, also a picture of a keyboard and a mouse with another USB port. Hooking it up is easy. I'll show you, you would just take your mouse and you plug that into one of the ports like that and then you take your keyboard and you plug it into one of the ports like that this is connected and then all we do is plug it into our computer now i'm not going to show you actually using this in the game because i do not want this to be a tutorial on how to cheat with a device like this this does have very legit purposes the legit purpose, again, would be for those people who want to use keyboard and mouse to play games that want you to just use a controller. And those games are out there, so this would allow you to use your keyboard and mouse on those games that want you to use a controller. It does also allow you to play games like Call of Duty or Overwatch or anything else that you want that blocks Rewaz. This would bypass that to allow you to use your keyboard and your mouse. Now we got to figure out what the app control looks like and what booting this thing up looks like. So we're going to just scan this here. Amesnix.com app download. Get it on Google Play. And the app is called Geek Vice. So we're just going to let that app install real quick while I do a little bit of desktop cleanup. Now what this app will do is it will connect to this remotely and allow you to change the profiles, change your key mappings, and it even lets you run macros. What kind of macros can you run? pretty much anything. It'll actually record the key inputs that you want with the timing that you want in the way that you want to really unlock some really neat features and make it so that you can really enhance your gameplay in certain ways. App has been installed, so we're going to boot it up. I'm gonna plug this guy into my laptop here and we'll just, it's gonna boot up. You heard my laptop ding. I'm gonna say add 
while using the app, allow. So now it's going to look for the device. And here it says, we found the AX200. And the first thing it says is firmware has found a new version. Would you like to upgrade? Let's upgrade it, why not? Usually with devices like this, the first thing that you wanna do is update because there's a lot of stability enhancements that happen with these updates. So certainly if there's an update available, you want to do it. So we'll do this update real quick and then we'll jump back. Now we are in the app, you can see AX200 is connected and immediately we have a lot of different options available to us. And I, I'm just gonna explore kind of what options I've got here because like I said, I haven't really played with this. So we can go into just the general config. You do have the ability right off, you can add the game that you're playing. So you can see here, We've got Fortnite, we've got Apex, we've got Battlefield, Battlefield, Red Dead, COD, Rainbow Six, Grand Theft Auto, Cyberpunk, you know, War Zones on here. So you can pick a layout that is already pre-configured for the game that you're probably playing anyway, but you can even go in and then modify the config even after that. So now we're looking at the modifiers. First of all, you've got your sensitivity adjustment for your mouse emulator. This is going to simulate using the analog stick even though you're using a mouse. So you can adjust your smoothness, you can adjust dead zone. You've got some advanced settings here where you can adjust the response curve. So if you're just finding that your aim's not working perfectly, you can spend a bunch of time to fine tune that aim. And like I haven't really played with this, but here we can go into expert mode and we can come up with some really crazy aim profiles so that it really matches what you're looking for. You are going to spend a lot of time just tinkering and playing with this to dial it in exactly the way you want. But once you have it dialed in, then it's exactly what you want. It's got aim boost. I don't even know what aim boost is. It is recommended to select low for games with smaller dead zones such as Apex and COD and high for games with large dead zones such as Destiny 2. When low, medium, and high are not suitable, customization can be done for adjustment. So really, really interesting options available here. That's just basically for the mouse. What else have we got? We've got ADS modes where if you're going to ADS, you can have certain things happen. We've got rockers, movement speed. You've got your key binds. So here's where you're gonna say, okay, up, down, left, right, that sort of thing, left bumper, right bumper. So all of your buttons are pre-mapped in there. Now, most of you already are gonna have these mapped to the buttons that you want them to be mapped to. Like that, you're not gonna spend a lot of time changing those maps, but if you really want to, you have the ability to select any key on the keyboard and map it to any key on the controller. You've also got the option for this flex map, and uh, I don't know what that flex map is. Switch between gamepad emulation and keyboard and mouse direct connection modes using the activation key. Okay, so flex map would be good. I don't know if you're gonna necessarily use it, but office mode is what you're gonna use if you need to be able to use your keyboard and mouse on screen through direct input. When you flip it into office mode, it will actually bypass the device and just become a keyboard and mouse just like regular. And then you can turn office mode off and then you're back into gamepad emulation. So lots and lots of really interesting options here. Again, I don't wanna get into too many details about how you could set this up because it definitely could be used for cheating. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about using a device like this to simulate a controller and unlocking that aim assist mode using mouse and keyboard. It's commonly believed that a good keyboard and mouse player won't like this because it's a little bit slower that the game applies to make that analog stick work where you're used to snapping around with that mouse input. So you do have the ability to really tweak that out with something like this, but it is always there. So that speed loss that you get, is it worth it to gain aim assist? That's the big question. If my suggestion would be the keyboard and mouse players who are good, they're not gonna use this. The keyboard and mouse players who are mediocre or average, they might look to something like this to gain a bit of an advantage to actually be competitive. Now, I'm kinda on the fence with this. Like, is it good, is it bad? First of all, let's get this off the table. Cheating sucks. It sucks when people jump in a game and cheat to try and make themselves unbeatable or to gain an advantage over the other players in the game. However, games, especially like Call of Duty, 
that their matchmaking is horrible, where you end up in lobbies with guys that have KDs that are like twice or triple or even four times what your KD is, it just makes the game not fun. Something like this could help level that playing field. And I compare this to when you go to a track and field event and there's these guys that are always just running so much faster than everybody else why shouldn't you buy some better shoes that allow you to run a little bit quicker maybe they add a little bit of bounce to your step maybe they add a little bit of cushion so you're not damaging your feet is that cheating or is that using technology to level the playing field a little bit and this is where i'm just so torn about this i don't like when guys cheat and then become like gods if you are god mode and just destroying everyone because you're using a device like this it's time to put it away if activision can get their act straightened out to where matchmaking is truly you're in a lobby with 150 people with similar skill to you there's no need for this because you're having fun anyway because yeah you're going to win some and you're going to lose some but it's always like just right at the edge of what you're capable of since the matchmaking sucks, you're ending up in these god mode lobbies and you, it's just not fun. And for that, I understand why guys want to level the playing field. I'm sorry, I've just made a lot of people upset. I can see my subscriber count dropping already because I've said before I hate cheaters and I do hate cheaters, but I wish that they would fix these games so that people would just get into a more exciting match where the skill is just matched better. So since that can't happen, this exists. And this exists to help guys use their keyboard and mouse, use the form factor that they're used to, and act like a controller. Cheating? Maybe. Probably. It's probably cheating. You decide yourself if cheating's right for you or not right for you. Don't go on the internet bragging about how awesome you are. If you're using a cheat device though, like just be quiet, get good, and don't cheat. That's the message. But uh, you can get one of these. I'll put a link in the description if you want one of these. Amzenix does have a few other products that I've tested out on this channel as well that work for keyboard and mouse and for controller. They specifically work for consoles. So this is kind of their breakout into the PC side of things and lots of exciting products from Amzenix out there now. Check it all out in the description. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.